Um, my name is Pat Cooper, and um, my husband Marlon and I have been members of St. Paul's for about five years. It seems like forever, but uh, because we love it so much. So the Dialogue Institute, I've been involved with really for a long time, for probably nine or ten years. Um, I was introduced to it first um, by a friend who was taking some of their cooking classes. And I just did that because I liked cooking. And then I, as I became more involved with people, I learned more about them. They're a, a group of mainly Turkish Muslims. Um, it's an international group, but there are a lot of them in the US. And their goal really is to achieve, um, the dialogue part is to, through dialogue and through meeting and working together with people of different faiths and different cultures to, um, be able to understand other folks and to be able to achieve peace and, and justice in, in that respect. Many of the things that they do at the Dialogue Institute in Kansas City is are education related, like they do um, um, speeches or, or um, lectures by uh, people about all kinds of different subjects, not just religion, but I went to one on Spanish poetry, and there was one on um, global warming, and they have come to St. Paul's with baklava. They've brought uh, Ramadan fast-breaking dinners to us. Um, they've brought those to Buddhist temples, to Hindu um, temples, to police stations, um, to all kinds of different groups to, to help us meet and understand them. And they have these ladies' brunches um, that they have invited people from all different faiths to come to. And uh, originally, we would go to the, the women's houses, the Turkish ladies' houses, and um, they would fix us a wonderful Turkish brunch, which is a big tradition in Turkey to have brunch at 10 o'clock and, um, and to invite guests. Then we reciprocated by inviting them to our homes. So we showed them the American tradition of inviting friends and having brunch. Yeah, and we can, that way we can see different traditions like the Turks always take off their shoes at the door, um, you know, which is great, your house stays cleaner, but I, you know, that's, and that's one of the reasons they do that, but I think they also do it for some religious reasons too. I, I'm not sure, I should ask them. One time um, they showed us how they tied their scarves and that was fun. They gave us each a scarf. You know, I, at another time, one of the older ladies, this was when a, a, one of the young women brought her mom who was visiting her, and she asked us where we could, uh, where she could get her hair cut. And we were like, you have hair under that veil? <laughs> it, was, it was so funny because uh, we don't think of that and, you know, that they have all the same desire to look nice. And when they get at home with their families, they take off their veils. So of course they're interested in what their hair looks like. And this year, because of COVID, we couldn't do it. Uh, so finally we came up with the idea that we might try a virtual brunch. And although we don't really eat, um, we do have tea sometimes. I have a, a Turkish teacup that I use and they do too. Um, but we don't really eat, we just visit. And which is really kind of the goal anyway. Is, is to meet and get to know each other. And our, our country is very divided right now. And it seems to me that if more people could sit down with the other, um, like we're doing with, with our brunches, um, it, would, it would be helpful. Once you've heard that someone else has the same goals and dreams that you do, it's, it's very easy to, to consider them your friend and, and work for for peace among nations, among peoples. It's so important for us to meet people that are different from us. And it's so easy to be in Johnson County and be kind of isolated. And you know, you can read a book about um, anti-racism and, um, and I believe there's lots of, of racism. It's not just with, uh, with um, black and white and brown, but it's also with religion and and countries and nationalities. Some of them uh, at our last meeting talked about um, the tradition of um, the tooth fairy, <laughs> believe it or not. And we, we discovered that we had tooth fairies and they had tooth fairies. And it was, it just was, I suppose, comforting to them to know that we had that similarity and they could remember their childhood and 
the remembering of those traditions from your childhood, I think are comforting. I know in, in my own circumstances, just remembering what my parents would do for collecting flowers to take to the Memorial Day Cemetery and all the stories that went with, with us when we went to the cemetery with the flowers and my aunt telling the stories and my mom telling the stories. And so when I do that tradition now, it, it helps me remember and remember them and I'm comforted, even though they're no longer here, I, I can remember that. Um, one of the, the young ladies was from Bosnia, and uh, she talked about how she had to leave her country in the 90s because of the war. She and her family all left the country, but, and they miss it, but they still celebrate some of the traditions that they celebrated in Bosnia. And it's, it's a great comfort to her because she hasn't been able to go back, but she can still remember what, what her culture is. The, the one lady that, um, was really one of the organizers of the group and she had a baby the week that we had the the last zoom meeting the last brunch and uh, so she wasn't there but she had emailed me that she was really sorry to miss the traditional thing because she missed her mom and her mom traditionally would make her things and give to her new baby this is her second baby and uh, so she missed that. So some of the people from Hands of Love, the crochet knitting group at the church, um, we got some things together and we sent her an afghan and a, and a little baby hat. And she was so moved by that. You know, she, it, it was like her mother was there. And, and I really think a lot of them think of us, of us as mother figures because they're young women that have young families. So it makes, it makes us feel good too, as well as them. Mm -hmm. St. Paul's, I'm Corey Mahaffey. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.